Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America once again and we're going to have a look at a beer from another brewery that I've never tried anything from before. And this is a state that I don't get to review all that many beers from either, apart from one of the breweries who are pretty big these days. So for this one, we are going to go to the southeast of the country, to the state of Florida and the city of Tallahassee, which is also the state capital. And we're going to have a look at my first beer from Ology Brewing Company. So this one is called the Heliocentric Distortion. It's a New England hazy double IPA, whatever you want to call it, coming in at 8% ABV. And I picked this beer up in Shiosk over in Copenhagen, which is one of my favourite beer shops, actually. They had a good few different beers from Ology, and this is the one that caught my eye just because of the artwork and its name, of course. If you've watched the channel for, for any length of time, you might know that I am um, by trade, or when I studied, I studied chemistry and then astrophysics. And when it comes to these American breweries and trying things from new breweries, there does come a point where you're just like, this one has the nicest artwork, um, this one's got the coolest name, I'll go for that one. It just it kind of gets to that point. Uh, and, and sometimes when you're looking at new breweries and things like that. Shios had quite a few beers from Ology and this is the one that just kind of stuck out to me. So here we are reviewing it for you here on the channel. My first encounter with these guys, so fingers crossed it turns out to be a good beer. Like I said, I've reviewed a couple of different beers from Florida. We get the Cigar City beers over here fairly easily in Scandinavia. Beyond that, I've had quite a few collaborations involving different Florida breweries. I've had a few involving Jay Wakefield. Um, I've had a couple involving Tampa. Tampa Bay Brewing Company, one from a uh, Copper Tail Brewery as well, and I think there has been one or two others actually that I've uh, reviewed things from as well. So um, yeah, this is a very rare uh, opportunity to, to do a dedicated review to a Florida craft brewery, but hopefully that starts to change over the next little while. As I've told you before, we seem to be getting more things from different states in the US over here at the moment. Uh, for a long time it was just California, Colorado, and then the odd smattering of things from different places, but that's changed a lot over the last well, little while, and long may that continue. Shiosk and Copenhagen always have a very good range of different American craft beers so definitely worth checking out if you find yourself over there. So yeah, very curious to see how this one turns out, the Heliocentric Distortion 8% New England Hazy Double IPA, so fingers crossed this is a good beer, and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I'll do in the future from Ology Brewing Company. This is the very first time I'm encountering these guys, as I said. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to very regularly these days because we are getting a good selection of things from over in America, which is obviously great. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear what you guys are, uh, the you know, from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Ology Brewing Company then, on to my brewery now. So as I've mentioned to you already, Ology Brewing Company are based in Tallahassee, which is the state capital of Florida, kind of in the northwestern part of the state. On the western coast, it kind of curves a little bit and you'll find Tallahassee almost just on the apex of the curve. But this company was founded back in 2017 by Nick Walker, although there's several other partners involved, including Max Arndt, Brian Clark and Paul Woodward. So Nick grew up in a family of scientific researchers who worked at the Florida State University in Tallahassee. Apparently, his grandfather, Lloyd Beidler, was a psychobiology researcher and he studied taste and how it affected the brain, while on the other hand his father, Jim Walker, was a researcher in olfaction, which is the study of smell, and Nick himself studied for a bachelor's degree in biology and he also worked as a nurse in a local hospital as well, but apparently from very early on he developed a, a taste for beer. Um, so that was what really prompted him to go into home brewing and then starting up his own company, which is pretty cool. And of course, the family does have a massive scientific background as well, so they can look into the science of it a lot. And that explains the name of this brewery as well. Ology, of course, is the suffix that you apply to a word to, uh, to term it as a study of something, you know, um, 
physiology, biology and things like that, or onomy is the other one that we can sometimes do for me, astronomy, uh, chemistry and all of these kind of things. So yeah, Ology Brewing Company, I think that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, these guys opened their first brewery on 6th Avenue, which was a small facility of only 1,000 square feet, and they gradually added more infrastructure to this brewery over the years. They eventually outgrew this brewery though, and then they added a second site in 2019 at Power Mill Court, which is known as Ology Power Mill, and this has around 4,200 square feet of space, so um, an increase of threefold on the previous one, and in 2020 they announced plans to begin distilling spirits as well, and they're going to do vodkas, gins, some whiskies and bourbons and all of these kind of things. So um, yeah, lots of interesting things to come from these guys, and it was actually one of the bartenders, uh, James Grant, who assumed the position of master distiller. Quite a well-known, uh, you know, quite a good name actually for the, the master distiller when you think about it. Grant's Whiskey, quite a famous Scotch whiskey brand from my homeland, of course. But yeah, as of October 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, Ology Brewing Company have produced around 270 different kinds of beers, according to Untapped, and uh, that number, of course, will likely increase. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about... Um about Ology Brewing Company for the moment. That was all the information I was really able to find on these guys. Quite a young company when you consider the age of some of the craft breweries these days in, uh, over in the States. But uh, yeah, definitely nice to review my first beer from Tallahassee. I have actually been to Florida a good number of times, I think like six or seven times, because my dad used to love traveling to America, so he used to take us over there and we used to drive around. So I've been all around Florida. And um, yeah, I've you know we went to Disney World and did all those things when we were younger, and then we explored some of the other cities when we got a little bit older but I've not been to Tallahassee in a very long time I think I was in Tallahassee when I was um, when I was very young actually but I've seen quite a lot of the uh, the southeast US uh, but that was back when I was you know f the last time I was there was when I was about 15 about 15 or so so uh, yeah it would be nice to go back there and try some of the different breweries and I guess you know these days there's a lot more of them opening up so we can go maybe the next time I make it to Florida we'll go and check out the likes of Jay Wakefield and Ology and all of these other kind of things and explore a little bit but um, yeah um, as I said that's all I can really tell you about Ology Brewing Company for the moment hopefully we can review some more from these guys in the future but I think it might well have been a kind of one-off that Shiosk in Copenhagen had some of these beers. I've never seen them over here in Sweden either and I've not seen them back home in Scotland. Um, so yeah, my very, very first encounter with these guys. But if you want to learn more about this brewery, as I said earlier, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, this one, as I say, should be pretty interesting. So I'll just let you have a little look a little look at the artwork of this one before we open it up. As you can see, this one has some really nice astrophysics artwork and I will be holding on to this can afterwards for my uh, beer wall that we're going to have when I get my new apartment. But um, yeah, really nicely presented this one. Heliocentric distortion. And of course this kind of, uh, I think that, you know, this is referring really to the wobble that the sun gives to... Um, all the different planets because of gravitational pulls and things like that. So um, yeah, pretty interesting this one I have to say. 8% ABV, a New England hazy double IPA, whatever you want to call it. And um, yeah, it's hopped with Mosaic and Nelson Sovine. We know Mosaic is the American hop, 13 to 14% alpha acid, lovely juicy tangerine nose. Nelson Sovine on the other hand is even higher in its alpha acid at 16% uh, usually. And that's got that lovely kind of white green grapey thing. One of my favourite hops, actually. But um, yeah, this is uh, this beer has won a medal, the twenty twenty gold winner, which I think is pretty impressive. You can see that here, just being covered up by the Danish uh, pants sticker for the can recycling. But um, yeah, nicely presented there. You can see on the back, Ology Brewing Company, Hazy Double India Pale Ale. Tallahassee, Florida. So um, yeah, this should be pretty nice. 473 milliliter can, which is one American pint. We always make fun of the American measurement system here on Rampant Line Reviews because it doesn't make sense. Cups and quarts and all of these sort of things. Guys, use the metric system. It's based on water, the universal solvent, and then you can sell your beers in half liter cans. Although in fairness in Europe, we tend to use the 440s, which is less beer. So yeah, make of that what you will. But 473 milliliters in this one, and it says on the top this was tapped on the 24th of September 2020 and I'm reviewing it for you on the 31st of October so it's been in the can a month actually and I bought this maybe about a week 
or so ago in uh, Shiosk in Copenhagen. So yeah, it's still pretty fresh. A month old for an American beer like this is pretty good for uh, for Europe. So let's get this guy out then and we will get on with the tasting. I just need to get this sticker off it <laughs> and we'll see how it goes. There we go, take that little sticker off and get it open. Yeah, very, very curious to see what this has in store for us. I think this is actually the first dedicated review I've done for a Florida brewery other than Cigar City. As I said, we do get quite a few Cigar City beers over here, especially since they joined the Canarchy partnership that they have with um, with Oscar Blues from Colorado. Oh, that's weird. Lots of carbonation sticking to the side of the glass on this one, even though I rinsed it before I did this video. That's annoying. Yeah, okay, well, one side of my glass apparently is clean, the other side is not as clean. Look at that, but that'll, fa that'll disappear fairly soon. But yeah, anyway, in terms of its appearance, you can see that this beer has poured with a um, one-third, uh, so maybe, maybe near a two-third finger, sorry, of a frothy, I would say kind of perfect white head, this one. The colour of this beer, I would say, is a lovely kind of bright uh, bright yellow. It's kind of somewhere, but it's kind of around the colour of a mango juice. I always like to use the different fruit juices as a frame of reference for the colours of the New England IPAs because they really do just remind me of, uh, of big fruit juices. But there's now one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. You can see a few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there. But overall, um, this beer does look pretty much as you would expect from a hazy New England double IPA. So you can see this one, it does actually have a fair degree of haze to it. It's certainly not the soupiest and gloopiest that I've come across at an 8%er. But the thing is, with these New England hazies, you do expect the haziness to go up and up and up the further up the alcohol scale you go. At 8%, um, I think, um, I found this with some of the European ones that once you start to go above 8.5, unless you add in a slightly sweetening malt, I guess in the American case it would be, you know, a little bit of Turo or a, bit, a little bit of Crystal or something like that. In Europe they're more likely to use like Carapils from Germany or Cara Munich or, you know, something like this, or maybe even a little bit of Vienna malt from Austria would do the trick. But if you go above 8.5% with these beers and you use only like pale malt, wheat and uh, oats, it can give you a little bit of uh, booziness to the beer. You really can feel the booze in it. But if you add in a little bit of sweetener, uh, a little bit of a sweetening malt to it, you can quite easily go above the 8.5% comfortably with these, just in my opinion. But yeah, this one, in terms of its colour, I think this one may well be like a pure wheat, oats and kind of pale malt base. Or there might be, you know, there could well be some kind of crystal in this one, but I'm sure we'll find out when we taste it. But regardless, it looks like a very, very nice beer. And as I say, the higher that you go up the alcohol scale with these, um, the, the hazier usually they get because of the higher oat and wheat content. But yeah, it certainly looks the part. It looks like a lovely, lovely beer. So um, yeah, let's check out the aroma of this one and see how we get on. I'm very, very curious to see what this has in store for us. Oh, mm, and I'm going to say straight away, this one has a lovely, lovely aroma. Pardon me a second. <clears throat> there we go. Just need to clear the throat. Um, but yeah, the aroma coming out of this beer is absolutely lovely. Um, what you'll notice straight away with it is it's one of these kind of softer smelling um, New England doubles. There's a lot of lovely oaty creaminess to this one. There's a very smooth kind of white bready character in there. You can pick out a little bit of bitiness from the wheat, but I would actually go as far as saying that the wheat is also very, very smooth in this one. So a little bit of a kind of crisp white bready character for me sitting underneath. I would guess that that's a little bit of pale malt. A little bit of bitiness from the wheat towards the back of the nose, like I said. It's quite smooth as well um, on that wheaty side of things, but you get a lovely OT creaminess out of this one too. So, to be honest with you, um, yeah, I would say with this one, this comes across as one of the more, the kind of smoother, more kind of treehouse like New England hazies for me. As I've told you before on the channel, when it comes to the trilliums, they're the more wheaty and bitey ones. The uh, tree houses are the more kind of oaty and creamies. The Lawsons that I've discovered recently, they are more kind of like a New England take on the West Coast IP a little bit. They're a little bit like that. And then, of course, you've got the Alchemist ones, which are the more kind of farmhouse-y type, um, type beers. But yeah, the aroma that comes out of this is lovely. Very smooth, bready, crisp. I like the malt base on this one. If you've watched the channel for any length of time, you will know that I'm a sucker for a good malt base and I always look at that first when it comes to the beer. It's kind of part of being Scottish, you know, the single malts, you look at the malts in beer, that's always what you want, the Scottish sweet tooth. But um, yeah, 
the aroma coming out of this beer, I have to say, is absolutely lovely. But this strikes me as being one of the kind of softer, um, yeah, it really strikes me as being one of the softer New England IPAs that I've come across, actually. Mm. don't know what's going on with my throat today. <coughs> there we go. That feels better now, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, the aroma of this one, lovely and soft on the malt base and just very, very smooth. It doesn't come across as overly creamy. It just comes across as a really nice blend and, and very, very smooth, actually. So white bread, a little bit of bitey wheat, smooth wheat, and then also some nice kind of oaty notes in there. There's maybe a tiny little hint of a slightly biscuity, cookie type thing to this one, but that's quite minimal for me. On the hoppy side of things then, good little bit of floral aromaticity out of this one. You would expect that from both of the hops that are in this. They're, they are high alpha acid, but the bitterness of a beer is usually determined by how much hops, or what quantity of hops you put in at the boil stage and in the first hour of the boil. I would guess from the aroma of this one, this one doesn't come across as being kind of aggressively bitter, which is what you expect from these New England and IPAs um, and that would kind of suggest to me that the majority of the hops in this one have been added later in the boil within the last half hour or indeed through dry hopping. Once you go past that kind of hour mark if you like or I think progressively throughout the brew the later that you add the hops the general trend is that the, the bitterness uh, contribution drops in, f in favour of the, the kind of um, in, f in favour of flavour and aroma actually and you get that straight away with this beer. This one smells like it's a, it's a really kind of late edition hop beer, this one. But yeah, there's a nice bit of grassiness to the beer, and of course you've got those lovely fruity notes. If you know the hops that are in this beer, this one doesn't really do, any, do anything surprising, but um, yeah, it gives you what you want from them. So for me, it's the big kind of white green grapey notes from the Nelson Sovian that come out first. Yeah, that's what kind of sticks out to me. Um, they are the ones that are a little bit more kind of forthright. A lot of people don't know that Nelson Sovian actually has a hell of a spicy note to it if you use it as an early edition hop. It's one of the spiciest hops going if you use it in that way. But um, yeah, the the behind that nice kind of white green grapey exterior, if you like, you can smell that slightly more oily tangerine orangey character and that's the mosaic in there that's giving you that. So for me the fruits are very very kind of straight up, that lovely oily tangerine orange is forming the backbone but the Nelson Sovian that is giving you that big white green grapey note, that's giving you the more um, the more kind of forthright fruit, that's the thing that's really a little bit more kind of poignant in the aroma for me if you like. So yeah, for me, this ar the aroma of this beer is not such a surprise, it just comes across as, as exactly what I would kind of expect if Trillium were to brew this kind of beer actually, and um, not Treehouse rather, mixing it up, if Treehouse were to brew it, it comes across as a very smooth kind of oaty leaning um, New England IPA, this one, uh, with lovely juicy fruity notes. I've had quite a few beers that have had Mosaic and Nelson Sovian paired together in them, so this one does have a good little bit to uh, live up to. We've got some very good New England IPA breweries over here in Europe these days. In Sweden, for example, we have Apex and Ten Hands and Steve Beariots and OO and all of these kind of guys, so this beer has got a good way to go if it's going to impress me. So let's see how we do with this then. So this one is the Heliocentric Distortion, a New England hazy IPA coming in at 8% ABV from Ology Brewing Company in Tallahassee, the state capital in the northwestern part of Florida. Massive shout out to Shios once again for getting this beer in, really excited to try it and do spend a little bit of time to uh, have a go at that aroma before you get stuck into it, it really is very very nice. So yeah, let's have a taste of this one then. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Yeah, that's a very, very nice beer, I have to say. Um, very drinkable as well. And that's one of the things that you would kind of expect. You know, Florida, very, very tropical state in my experience. And the first thing you notice about this beer is that it is, you know, really quite easy drinking. That's stupidly drinkable for um, an 8 percenter. One of the things that I've really noticed with the American beers in recent times is that I find the mouthfeel of the American stuff not quite as thick as what we have here in, uh, in Scandinavia. And um, it's, I've never, you know, it, it's, it was particularly, it was with Imperial Stouts that I noticed at first. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a thicker Imperial Stout than a Scandinavian Imperial Stout. Um, 
Sorry about the edit there guys, little issue with the camera and the memory card, just happens sometimes. But um, yeah, like I was saying there, the thing that you are going to notice, I think, with these American beers, if you're drinking a lot of European stuff as well, is I really find the American ones are a little bit kind of lighter in their mouthfeel. And to be honest, especially in states like Florida, that makes sense just because of the, the climate, if you like. You know, Florida's very, I remember Florida being, you know, very humid at certain points and being very, very hot. So it makes sense that their beers are a little bit lighter and a little bit crisper. In their uh, in their mouthfeels, and that's certainly what I find with this one. As I say, this is stupidly drinkable for an eight percent double IPA. But I will say, this is a lovely beer. So thumbs up to uh, Ology Brewing Company for this one. So let's do a proper analysis of the flavour and just break it down a little bit. So yeah, where to start with this one? Um, it's a very well balanced beer this one, it's got a little bit of everything that you would want. Um, so yeah, straight away with the beer then, you're going to notice that lovely kind of smooth white bready quality, that just blankets the middle of your tongue. Um, it's, it really is lovely actually, that lovely white bready quality, that just blankets the middle of your tongue there. It's actually a very smooth white bread actually and I think that if I was kind of tasting this beer blind I might actually think that it's got like a Munich malt base to it so I'd be curious to know what their base malt in this one is if it is you know straight up pale malt I don't know how many malteries there are in America or what region is well known for uh, for producing malt maybe the Midwest because of all the plains and stuff like this but um, yeah the white base that this beer has the white bready base is absolutely lovely so um, this beer gets a thumbs up from me in that regard, I think it comes across really, really nicely in terms of the white ready base. But yeah, the more that you drink of this one, what you'll notice is that when you go to the back third of your palate, you'll feel that the breadiness just thickens up a little bit. You do get a wee touch of bitey wheaty quality on that back third of the palate. There's one or two little grainy notes come out of it as well, but yeah, on that back third of the tongue, you have a slightly thicker white bready note to the beer, but the wheat comes across as very smooth as you move further forward, and as you move into that middle third of your palate, you can feel that the um, the thickness just goes down a little bit, and then you feel that kind of crisp white bready note underneath again, and then on top of that, you've got the nice kind of oaty sweetness in there, and that's really nice. I mean, to me, this comes across um, in the same way as some of the uh, more kind of old school Swedish and Scandinavian New England IPAs did. If I compare this to like, you know, the Narangi from uh, OO Brewing, the um, the Bastard Princess from Amar Broikus in, uh, in, in Copenhagen, um, the GBG Beer Week and the Amazing Haze from, uh, from Stieg Beeritz. And um, that's what I would really... Uh, compare this one to. This is like a properly old school kind of really bready leaning New England IPA. The trend that we've seen over here in Europe has been that they've got a bit more of an oily kind of Werther's original butter candy type sweetness in the middle of the palate. Now I've noticed that this style in Europe is getting sweeter but this one for me goes back to what we were kind of drinking when the New England IPAs first came over here to Europe. Um, that's what I'm, I really get out of this one. Um, it's got a lovely breadiness to it. So this really reminds me in some ways of the um, the O'O Narangi, the Stieg Berry, it's amazing haze, the Amar uh, Bastard Princess, and some of the early things from the likes of Lervig and uh, and uh, and um, Amundsen up in Norway as well. It's really got that kind of vibe to it, but it's a lovely, lovely beer, this one. Yeah. So yeah, in the middle of your palate there, like I say, you will get that nice kind of smooth, kind of creamy base out of the beer. In the centre of your palate, you will get a tiny, tiny little bit of a slightly butter candy Werther's Original sort of thing, but it is very, very minimal. Like I say, back third of your palate is mainly the kind of smoothness of the wheat with a little bit of bitiness and greeniness, and the middle third of your palate... It's a little bit lighter with a more kind of oaty, creamy note in there as well. So the malt base of this beer is kind of smooth and you get a few more kind of grainy elements coming out of this beer the further that you go into the aftertaste with it as well. So it's, it's really interesting in that regard how, um, how this one goes together. Um, the malt base is, is pretty solid in this one, but it's, a very, it's very much a straight shooting malt base in my mind. Um, so yeah, let's have a little look at the hoppy side of the beer then. In the back corners of the palate there is a little bit of earthiness to this one, and I think that's the mosaic that's likely to give you that, but I would suspect with this beer they have used a bittering hop in this. It does have a little bit of a kind of floral aromatic spice and you're going to notice that builds up as you move from the back corners of the palate all the way 
to the uh, the front. So I wouldn't be surprised if this has something like uh, Columbus, Tomahawk or Zeus. I don't find it quite as spicy as I would normally find Columbus. So I do wonder if it's maybe Tomahawk or Zeus or maybe even the CTZ uh, CTZ blend that's in this one. That's That could be the, the bittering hop that goes in here. I think that will be the early edition hop. This beer isn't big, so big in terms of its bitterness. You don't expect the style to be right enough. Um, but um, yeah, I think there is just a little bit of that kind of nice floral aromatic bitterness to this beer. But yeah, you'll notice that as you move along the sides of your palate there. But as you reach the front curve of your tongue, you'll notice the beer is distinctly lighter and grassy. But in fairness, there is a little bit of zestiness comes out of that grassiness as well, which is quite nice. But yeah, on the front third of your palate, that's where you get the nice oily bubble where those juicy, fru uh, juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. And that comes across very nicely in this one. Again, for me, this beer isn't doing anything that I really wouldn't expect. It just comes across as being very, very well crafted, actually. So that's a good thing. That's what we want. You know, there's so many New England hazy IPAs on the market these days. It's difficult to do something surprising and you know sometimes simplicity is better it's sometimes best just to take the route of doing it simply and doing it well and I think that's um, that's what this beer strikes me as uh, as having in mind when it's being brewed that's that's what really comes to the fore um, in my opinion at least with this one this is, is really quite just nicely done so on that front third of your palate then as I said, you'll feel that nice oily bubble with the, the juicy fruit ester just rolling its way out. If you go towards the back of that front third of your palate, you will feel that there's a wee bit of a kind of citrusy, zesty sort of thing. It almost comes across as like slightly lemony, but not quite as pungent and not quite as wet. So there is a wee bit of a citrusy note just on that border between the kind of front third of your tongue and the middle third of your tongue. As I said, behind that, you've got all these kind of bready and oaty kind of properties, but that border there there is just a little bit of a kind of grainy darkness to it and then in front of that you get a, a nice kind of almost lemony citrus there and as you move further forward that lemony citrus just kind of fades away a little bit then as you reach the kind of front part the front half of that front third of your tongue you start to get that more oily juicy kind of tangerine note from the uh, from the mosaic in this one the, the the mosaic has a little bit of an orangey character i always used to love the amarillo hop back in the day because that was a very very oily orange but then along came mosaic a lot of people started using that instead of, uh, of amarillo because it was it was a bit lighter in its flavor and it just had a little bit more complexity to it and um, but it's a beautiful hop as well i really do like mosaic but you do get that more kind of slightly oily tangerine note just sitting there on the kind of tip of the, just behind the tip of the tongue there on that one in that little oily bubble. And as the kind of flavour progresses, you will notice that the tangerines, they just kind of spread back a little bit further on that front third of your tongue, which is quite interesting. But yeah. But yeah, the other thing you start to get out of this one is that just on that kind of front edge of the tongue, you'll feel those lovely big white uh, green um, grapey notes coming out from the Nelson Sovian. It almost gives the impression of a little bit of a gooseberry, like if you just go on the very tip of the tongue, it feels those quite green grapey notes feel a little bit more oily and more kind of gooseberry like. But yeah, you'll feel that kind of white green grapey note. It kind of almost just spreads around the kind of front edge of the tongue, and on the very, 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 very tip of the tongue, you do start to get a little bit more of a zestiness out of the beer. The grassiness that is sitting there on the front of the tongue really develops a bit of zestiness the further that you go into the aftertaste with this beer but um yeah the the flavor of this one that uh, that come, the, the flavor that comes out of this beer i think is very very nice as i said this one doesn't do anything surprising for me but it just comes across as a ridiculously well crafted beer and you can't ask for much more than that these days there's so many new england ipas on the market all you can ask is for breweries to do well-crafted ones and um, in terms of the flavor profile i would say that this is one of the kind of smoother and more juicy leaning ones. I would definitely say that about it. It's a little bit kind of akin to some of the, the treehouse stuff, but in fairness, as you let the flavour progress, it does develop a few kind of trillium traits, like a you do get a little bit more of the wheaty bitiness and a few grainy notes kind of pushing their way out of the beer as well. And that's um I think that goes together really nicely in this one. So um yeah, just take a little bit of time and uh, and ponder that over actually because it, it goes together really nicely um that's the flavor profile i think covered quite well on this one let's have a little talk about the mouthfeel then so so yeah 
first thing that comes to mind with this beer is that it's, um, I find this one, um, it's mid-bodied, it's at the lower end of mid-bodied for me. It's actually quite a crisp beer in that sense. I would wonder if there is maybe a little touch of Pilsner malt in this one. That's not such a common thing to do in the American um, New England IPAs, if I remember rightly. It is quite popular amongst European breweries to do that because we've got a, ready, you know, a readily available supply of Pils malt from... Uh, from Germany, from the various malteries down there, um, but I don't know if it's, I, I'm not sure about this, because normally what you would get with Pils malt if, is if you went to the centre of your palate and then just moved back a little bit, you would feel that Pilsner malt mouthfeel, and you do, in fairness, when you go a little bit further back in this one, you do get just a little bit of crispness out of this, so it starts off with a very kind of crisp, ready quality, but then you get that slightly... Um, almost Pilsner malt Christmas out of this beer later on. But yeah, I would describe this beer as quite a crisp New England double IPA. This is kind of ridiculously easy to drink for the uh, for the percentage that it is. And this is one of the things that's always amazed me with uh, these American breweries. Is a lot of them are located in the middle of industrial estates, in the middle of nowhere and stuff. People drive these big trucks and go along there and just... Um, <clears throat> You know, and uh, you know they drink. They drink a few of these, then they drive home. For me, it's just crazy that they they do that. But in America, you have to drive everywhere. This beer is, as I say, ridiculously easy to drink. To me, this goes down like some of the session IPAs that we have um, here in Sweden. It's mouthfeel and everything, and the level of crispness and stuff that it has reminds me of uh, the Neblina, which is a four point five percent session IPA from one of my local breweries here in the south of Sweden. The mouthfeel and stuff really reminds me. Of, uh, of this actually so it's kind of it's it's crazy I really like this beer but it gets a big thumbs up from me and um, but yeah very crisp one of the most crisp and light and drinkable New England doubles that I've had it really has that big crisp mouthfeel to it it comes across as a little bit wet in some of its mouthfeel as well but yeah in terms of the hoppy bitterness I would say that this beer has what would we say about this um, Yeah, I think this one has maybe around 40 IBUs. The carbonation is um, is very, very smooth on this one. As I say, it does give the beer a little bit of crispness and the wetness in the mouthfeel does that as well. But smooth malt base, um, there is a little bit of, you know, there's a wee bit of bitiness from the wheat, but quite a smoothness from the oats and the wheat also kind of contributes to the smoothness as well. Hoppy bitterness is around 40 IBUs and then with the fruitiness you've got a nice kind of juicy quality to it as well but at the same time the fruits come across as a little bit smooth also so um, yeah it's a very easy drinking um, New England double for me I think you're going to struggle to come across ones that are as drinkable as, um, as this and f for me um, coming from the, the Swedish Scandinavian perspective and also having experience of some of the Scottish beers as well um, I find this one you know ridiculously crisp the mouthfeel that you have in this for me is more akin to some of the session IPAs that I would drink over here we usually expect the, the, the double IPAs to be a little bit more bitter than this a little bit kind of more thicker and creamy but I can't pardon me understand why why this one would be like this because of the, the climate that you have in Florida generally and in, uh, in Tallahassee. It's very close to the water, of course. But uh, the main message to take away is this is a really, really nice New England double IP. I think it had like a rating of about 4.1 on Untapped, which shows you how highly regarded this is. And uh, I'm certainly not disappointed that I picked this one up. This was uh, a really interesting one to review for you here and nice to do a dedicated review to another Florida brewery as well because we don't get to do too many of these here on the channel. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. And this one was the Heliocentric Distortion, an 8% New England double IPA coming in at 8% ABV from uh, Ology Brewing Company in Tallahassee, the state capital in the northwestern part of Florida. Awesome beer and massive shout out once again to Shiosk in Copenhagen for, uh, for stocking this beer along with some others. You will see some more interesting American reviews over the next little while, both ones that I've in Shiosk and thanks to one of my uh, subscribers Chris Contreras so um, yeah let's leave it at that then once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from Ology Brewing Company we will return to these guys at some point in the fairly near future um, and hopefully I can go up there and visit or go over there, I should say, and visit Ology Brewing Company at some point. It'd be cool to go to Tallahassee and do some out and about videos and maybe even do a Meet the Brewery segment with a few of the different breweries there. That would be awesome. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. Thank you again for watching my reviews. Let me know your own thoughts and I'll catch you guys with the next one. This one was the Heliocentric Distortion, an 8% New England 
um, Heasy double IPA at 8% from uh, Ology Brewing Company in Tallahassee, Florida over in America. Slange it, school, cheers. Make sure you check out this brewery and if you can, check out this beer. The Nelson Sauvignon and the Mosaic come out really, really nicely in this one. Cheers.